Next, I would like to show the relationship between the Bayot Savat law and also the Coulomb's law. Let's recall, previously in electric field calculations, we have the three type of charge density where we have the rho L, which is the line charge. We have a rho S, the surface charge, and also rho V, the volume charge. And Q represent the total charge in the system. And Q also can be present as a point charge. Right. By using the Coulomb's law, we can find the electric field intensity. Similarly, in magnetic field calculation, we have the current density, whether we have the filament current, I, the surface current, J, and also the volume current, J. This one is JS, this one is J. And by using the biot savat law, we can find the magnetic field intensity. As introductions, the law was co-originated by Felix Savat, a professor at College and de France, and Jean Baptiste, Baptiste Bayot, a French physic, in 1820. Let's say you have the long wire carrying a current I, so the field is basically going around the wire. Okay, you can use the right hand grip rule in order to find the direction of the magnetic field intensity right so this is illustrated of the field around the the wire current current as an observation we can see that the field is in the three directions the direction of current towards the z exists and we have the radius r from your source to your field and here we can see that the, the magnitude of h is basically proportional to the magnitude of current and also inversely proportional with the square roots of the distance hence the bio savat law can be stated as h equal to the integration of current element i dl okay cross product with the unit vector ar divided by 4 pi r square the unit is ampere per meter for filament current for the surface current we have the current element js ds and then we cross product with a, a unit vector ar and the same thing 4 pi r square the unit the same and also the volume current we have j dv cross product with a r divided by 4 pi r square so we can see that the h will have the same unit and also we have the different kind of integration depend on the current element that we deal off whether the filament surface and also the volume currents let's consider a filamentary currents okay let's say um, the current is flowing towards the z directions and we want to find what is the magnetic field intensity at a certain point here let's say the point is at b okay let's take a sample amount of currents dl here so the, the sample amount of current will provide the small amount of magnetic field intensity and then we have to find what is the unit vector of ar from your sample to this point right so this is the distance this is a unit unit vector so you can use um, the thing that you know and put inside these formulas okay the dl here is basically the dz in the direction of z and AR is basically the, the vector R divided by the magnitude of R and so on. Right. So this is how we do it. Right. 
So we can put basically a point inside the DL which is 0, 0, Z prime. So the Z prime is basically a, vari a variable and we have a Z. So this is basically the normal line from this point to your source which is 0, 0, Z. So you can see that it's the most identical with when we analyze uh, how to find the electric field intensity for Coulomb's law, all right? It's almost the same. First, you have you have to select the current element. Step two, the identify the dh, and step three, integrate over fundamental current length to get h. So from here, you you can find what is basically the vector r, and also what is the magnitude of r. And this is the field directions for. So we take a cylindrical coordinate. Okay, we see one by one. For the step one, so basically the current element, the DL is basically the direction of Z and the variable is DZ prime because the Z prime is our variable. So we, we integrate with a DZ prime. The step two, so we, we put everything we know inside the formulas. Okay, here the AR is equal to R divided by uh, the vector r divided by the magnitude so it become r bar divided by r cube so the difference is we have the cross product here for the electrostatic we have the dot product the dot product means that our e field had the same uh, unit vector same direction uh, with our source or our r from here you, the cross product will be a little bit different so you we put inside everything we know the limit which is the length of our filament is from a to b so basically this is a the finite uh, length uh, the finite length or the short um source the short uh, wired for example so we use the bio savat so you we do the integration from a to b so our magnitude of current i i z dz prime cost for that is this is our vector r vector r is from here z prime minus z z prime minus z in the direction of negative z right and then we have r in the direction of r so r in the direction of r minus z z prime minus z and this is how we find the magnitude okay r, r cube equal to r square plus uh, z prime minus z square and then 3 over 2 Right, this is the form. Okay, we can rename um, from A to the normal line as an alpha one, and from B to the normal line as an alpha two. Okay, and then we can use uh, this this rule. Okay, we have basically for for Cylindrical coordinate we have r phi z so it's quoted like this r phi z so imagine uh, if you have r phi and if r cos phi you got z z cos r you got phi and so on phi cos r about z okay something like that eh? so please remember the sequence right so here so we have to solve the integration and by using the identities as usual so we 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 integrate with dz prime so the z prime is here by using these uh identities this is the solutions okay this is the solutions next finally we got this form the h equal to in the direction of phi i over 4 pi r so in the bracket b minus z divided by r square plus but b min minus z square set and so on so we compare we should compare this form into our what we 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 draw before so the alpha one here is basically what okay let's say this is bz b minus z 
Where is B minus Z? This is here. Okay, B minus Z and and this is R square plus B minus Z square, which is um uh, this part right. This is R square and this is uh B minus Z square third. So this is uh, the thing. So we can see here, okay, this thing is basically this part divided by this part, which is per, which is sine alpha 2, alright? Sine alpha 2. And this part, we have minus A minus Z. A minus Z. Or we can reverse as plus Z minus A from here to here. So Z minus A divided by R square plus A minus Z square, which is this part. So this form is basically sine alpha 1. Okay, this part divided this part is sine alpha 1. So this is our conclusions from the analysis of filament current. Alright? So this basically this form will be given during your exam. Okay, so no need to remember but you have to understand what is it. And what happens if your filament is very long is very long mean alpha 1 and alpha 2 will become very large so approximate to 90 degrees so we can simplify our expression to be h equal to in the relation of phi i divided by 2 pi r ampere per meter 